Hey everyone, welcome to another HubSpot product spotlight video where we are highlighting for you the biggest releases of the past month. Let's take a look. We got a great update to our smart CRM conditional property options. So the value set in one property can affect what options are available in another property. Check this out. So here I am on the contacts page and I have a country property with three options in it and a state province property with a whole bunch of options in it that are a mishmash of the states and provinces from these countries. But look, if I set Australia as one country and Canada as another and United States as a third, then we come over here. Now I'm only seeing Australian states and territories. Let's set this one to South Australia. Here I'm only seeing Canadian provinces. Let's select Nova Scotia. And now I'm only seeing 50 nifty United States right here under the United States. Conditional property options are now available to all professional users in a public beta. So regardless of what hub you have, you can opt yourself into that beta and try it out. In Marketing Hub, we've made two cool updates to our social publishing tool. So here I am creating an Instagram image post. You can do this with both images and videos now. If you hover over the picture here, there's a tag icon. And you can come in here and you can tag individual people from right inside the social composer inside HubSpot. The other social update is that you can now at mention personal accounts in your LinkedIn posts. So try that out and have a little more personalization in your social posts. An exciting update in CMS Hub is we now have an AI powered blog post generator. Check this out. So here on the blog posts page, there's now a generate blog post button. And if you click on this, you can give it an idea of what you want to talk about. And you can select a target audience and which blog. And then if you go to the next page, it's going to think for a bit. And here are some titles. Depending on your subscription, you'll either just see the titles or you'll also get this SEO information. And you can choose the one you like best and you can move on to the next step where it will create this outline for you. And this is editable, but if we just take it as it is, ta-da, we now have a blog post ready for you to edit and fine tune. In Sales and Service Hub, we've added some cool new call analytics reports to help you see how your calls are going. So here I am on the calls index page and here in the top right corner, there's this new call analytics button. And if you click that, you're gonna see we have a whole bunch of different reports that tell you all the things you wanna know about how your team is performing on the phone. Another great update in Sales and Service Hub is that you can connect calling as a channel to your inboxes so your reps can respond to phone calls in the same place where they're responding to support tickets, emails, and live chats. So here I am on my inbox settings. If I connect a channel, I'll see calling is now an option here. I can select it, and if you have a HubSpot number you've already generated, you can connect that here. Or if you wanna generate a new number, you can select your country and then your area code. I'm in Massachusetts, so I'll select 339 as the area code. We'll run with that number and continue. And you can choose how this is going to be routed to your team. It can ring up to 10 phone numbers at the same time. Over in Operations Hub, you can now enroll contacts in a workflow using a webhook. So here I am with a brand new workflow and I'm gonna add a trigger and there's this new option to trigger it from a webhook. So I can come in here and I can create a webhook event and we're gonna give this a great name and we're gonna get this webhook URL. Now I'm going to copy this and paste it into an external app and when the test event comes in you'll be able to see the data you got here. So what we're going to do is parse this data and assign it to HubSpot properties. HubSpot has done a pretty good job of doing this automatically. We just need to tell it the data type. If there's any of these options that you don't want to include you can remove them. The most important thing is that you have to have an email property. That's how we're going to decide which contact is getting enrolled in this workflow. So you'll map that here and then you're done. You can create this webhook and you can now add it as a trigger to this workflow. So in this case, it has completed the workflow. That's the most basic thing. And so we'll keep that there. And now we have a webhook based trigger. This is a really powerful update for those of you who want to enroll contacts into workflows using data from other systems that are being sent out through webhooks. That's all I've got for you this month. Be sure to tune in next month for another product spotlight video where we will continue highlighting all the great work HubSpot's product teams are doing to make HubSpot a better tool for you to grow better.